let's get this party started. Uh, earlier today, we sat down and recorded this week in recruiting because Powers was out doing important stuff. Like work or like whatever that is. Know. Anyway, he had to record <laughs> it early. Here's This Week in Recruiting with Greg Powers and Next Level Athlete. You're on Texas Football Today. That's Greg Powers, and this is This Week in Cruton. It's This Week in Delay. This Week in Recruiting with Greg Powers and Next Level Athlete. Follow him on Twitter at GPowerScout. Follow Next Level Athlete on Twitter at NextLevelB1. See his fine work at TexasFootball.com slash recruiting. And, of course, this segment is brought to you by our good chicken friends at Chicken Express. Chicken Express it fuels all of us to be better at at what we at do. living at living oh, very good powering the top future football recruits of the world chicken express that would be Ooh. honestly in the in the post nli mm-hmm. world i would like i think they should just be like you know what chicken express uh, it's great fuel for playing football that'd be that'd be cool <laughs> Uh, it's this week in recruiting with Greg Powers, the next level athlete, uh, going through the biggest headlines from across the state. We're going to start with our prospect on the wa- rise. Our prospect on the rise going to Arlington, 2022 Arlington Seguin athlete, uh, Xavier Bryce. Uh, we don't talk a ton about Arlington Seguin, but they've got a big time playmaker in Xavier Bryce who has committed to Oklahoma. He had an offer from Texas. He is the newest member of the DCTF Hot 100. Uh, we have him rated as the number 10 athlete in the state. This is a guy who is very versatile powers and is now going to take his talents to Oklahoma. How about this comparison by Arlington Seguin head coach, Joe Gordon? He, he's a smooth athlete. He's your Deion Sanders. Oh. That's a great comparison, right? Yeah, I, I, that seems good. Uh, if you're being compared to Deion Sanders, I feel like things are going okay for you. Yeah, I think that you're going to make it. Uh Bryce is one of these guys that six foot two, 175 pounds was really starting to catch on fire in the evaluation period. It was a shortened evaluation period only in the month of June. Uh, but as he was able to travel out to colleges and let people actually see, you know, he's legit, his legit size, six, two, um, things started to take off for him. He was a Kansas commit who picked up an offer from Texas, then picked up, an offer from Oklahoma and then made a commitment to the Sooners. And as we're watching this highlight tape, what you're going to notice that he is that he does a lot of special things with the football in his hands and, and he has a great frame, but just think about that potential uh, in the defensive backfield, whether he ends up a cornerback or he plays safety uh, sky's the limit for Xavier Bryce and that defensive backfield unit at Arlington Seguin with him and 2023 corner Jamel Johnson it's going to be Bryce out of Arlington Seguin. Let's go to our commit of the week. Uh, we're not saying the labels make sense, guys. But <laughs> commit of the week, uh, we're going back out to Garland. Been talking a lot about Garland lately. 2022 Garland safety Chase Biddle has committed to SMU again. Uh, SMU going out to Garland and, and nabbing him. Uh, this is a guy who comes on the heels of another big time commit from out in east of Dallas. Uh, but Chase Biddle, uh, the number 38 player in the DCTF Hot 100, continues the hot streak for the SMU Mustangs. I didn't have to change much from last week's uh, recruiting notebook to keep it fresh for this week. Garland stayed the same. SMU commit stayed the same. The schools that the that Biddle was considering were pretty much the same. Alabama, TCU, Oklahoma, same schools that Jordan Hudson was considering last week when he picked SMU. This one, though, I have to say was a bit of a shocker. If you pull up all the uh, predictions on him, no one got this one right. They were all picking Oklahoma or TCU, uh, largely TCU for Chase Biddle. Uh, so SMU able to sneak in and get another four-star commitment, uh, just flexing their muscle a little bit in state. When they go head-to-head against TCU and win, that's a huge feather in their caps as a program. I mean, we had alluded to the fact that they might have been sitting in a front-running position for Jordan Hudson, but they came up from behind to grab the commitment of Biddle, who was a guy at the state seven on seven tournament who really passed the eyeball test. He's added some good weight to his frame. There was some talk early on that, you know, Biddle was a guy who could play on either side of the football, but as he's grown and matured, I think he's a true downhill style safety. He's going to spend some time probably playing up in the box, but he closes on the football extremely well. And, you know, you don't really always think about 
SMU defense, but this guy's going to bring the thunder. Yeah, he's a playmaker of the highest order there, and the newest commit for the SMU Mustangs, Chase Biddle, uh, uh, continues what has been a torrid, torrid recruiting session here, recruiting uh, season, rather, for the SMU Mustangs. We're talking this week in recruiting with Greg Powers, the next level athlete here on Texas Football Today. Get involved in the conversation, hashtag TF Today. Let's go to our underclassman of the week. Our underclassman of the week, we're going out east, and we're going to stay out east here for the next couple of segments. We're going to go to Texarkana, and y'all are not going to believe this, but Pleasant Grove has got a guy. Uh, no. In fact, a, a, a <laughs> number of guys. Today we're going to focus on 2024 running back Jalen Bordley. Jalen Bordley uh, already at six foot, 190 pounds as he enters his sophomore year. Um, and this is a guy who's already got pl- offers from Baylor, from Houston, from UTSA. And I know you really like uh, this kid, Jalen Bordley, out at Pleasant Grove. Well, there was, uh, out of all the players that we looked at at the state seven on seven tournament while while we were there covering the action, he was like a top five passes the eyeball test type of guy. Like he was a looker. He looks, I mean, six foot, six foot one, 190, 195 pounds and looks like he's really hard to tackle. I mean, he's well put together. He's playing some linebacker, playing some running back, um, splitting out wide and doing some wide receiver stuff. He moves really well. And I think that he's going to be one of these guys out in East Texas that's going to have all the offers. And Pleasant Grove has been a program that college recruiters have been flocking to in recent years. And their younger class of of prospects is really impressive. Jalen Bordley busted onto the scene um, last year. He ran for 192 yards in his first varsity game. So, I mean, this guy is actually producing on the field as a freshman, he's going to be even better as a sophomore. He's going to be not only one of the premier players in East Texas, he's going to be one of the premier players in the state. Um, and while you're out there, go ahead and take a look at uh, Landon Jackson's uh, younger brother, Chance Jackson, a six foot five, two hundred and forty pound freshman. You can play football. He's well, he kind of goes into that category of like if you can play football, it doesn't really matter what scheme you run. I mean, it does obviously to a certain extent, but it's like it's not it's not the determining factor. That like you see all the playmakers they put out uh, to the next level at Pleasant Grove, running that kind of uh, that kind of wing T type offense. Um, and here's a guy in Jalen Bordley who I think if you're looking at the the new college offenses, right, where a lot of it's power <laughs> spread and things like that, uh, this would be a guy that you would say, okay, well, you know, he doesn't run our style of offense. Maybe you wouldn't give him a second look. But proof that if you can play, you're going to get noticed, and coaches are not necessarily afraid. I don't want to say afraid, but they're not leery of teaching you a new uh, new scheme. If you can play, you can play. Jalen right there. And by the way, while you were talking, Bordley absolutely truck somebody <laughs> on this highlight <laughs> tape. It made, it, it made me go, ooh, whatever you uh, – but anyway, yeah, to your point, I love what Pleasant Grove does with using their guys on both sides of the field too you know especially at a younger age and as they mature they're not afraid to use their superstars at any position that's going to help that team succeed and as we've covered them in the state championship games got to know their coaches got to know their players over the years uh, you can always see that these are guys who buy into the team concept and I think that serves them well as they move on to college let's round it all out with our recruit of the week and on a recruit of the week we're going to stay local there in Texarkana and we're going to go from the, 4A, uh, from the 4A program there to the 5A program with Texas High. Uh, the Tigers have a uh, new superstar on defense. Feels like they just always have one. This time it's defensive end Derek Brown. Uh, and he is a guy who has 28 offers. He has now narrowed it down to two. He is going to consider the Baylor Bears and the Texas Longhorns. Uh, he's number 44 in the DCTF Hot 100 and a guy that... Uh, both Baylor and Texas have to feel pretty good at uh, having a theoretically a 50-50 shot at this kid. And just think if you were a team that had to play Texas high last year with Clayton Smith on one side and then Derek Brown on the other side uh, on the edge of the defense, Derek Brown had 67 tackles, 20 tackles for a loss and six sacks. And he had to share some of those numbers with Clayton. I mean, it's crazy to think about. I, I thought whenever this thing started that there would be a strong chance that Brown and Clayton Smith played together on the same team in college at Oklahoma. But one thing that we did talk about when he picked up that OU offer was 
they're very similar players, right? They, they have similar intangibles. They play similar positions. And does it make sense for two guys from the same high school to then go on in college and compete kind of in that, that same space? Well, obviously it may not make sense because Brown's down to two in-state Big 12 programs in Baylor and Texas. And Baylor did a really good job on the official visit to cement themselves in the top two. He had a really good time there buying into the team concept. They're led by a head coach there that's a defensive-minded head coach in Dave Aranda, and I think that that's going to give them a shot at Derek Brown on July 31st when he's set to make his decision, but I'm picking Texas. Sorry, I'm picking Texas. Baylor's in it, but I'm going with the Longhorns here for, for when, it all, when it's Brown's time to choose, which is my birthday on July 31st. I think he's going to be a Longhorn. Uh, on July 31st, we will both celebrate Greg Powers' birthday, and we will also ask what can Brown do for you. He is Greg Powers, the next level athlete. Follow him on Twitter, GPower Scout. Follow Next Level Athlete on Twitter, Next Level D1. See his fine work at texasfootball.com slash recruiting. Powers, appreciate your time, and uh, I guess we'll do this again next week when we get back from coaching school. So, bye. Sounds good. Ah! <laughs> there he is. That's, that's literally how I feel every time you walk Greg past Powers. my desk. <laughs> Greg Powers, Next Level Athlete uh, for this week in recruiting. Appreciate his time, as always. <laughs>